other organic systems, Bt was used as a spray to kill insects. And then the GM world was saying, to, to say that GM crops were good to get insect resistance from the Bt gene, that oh, organic farmers have been using it all the time. But here's the big difference. Like organic farmers use it a one spray to kill insects. Now with this Bt gene in the cells of plants, they produce Bt toxin every day of the year as the plants are green. And then plant and insects can't then eat the crop because they are killed, it's toxin. So what's happening now is that that Bt toxin is decomposed, is what the, the GM scientists say. That as the plant dies, the, D, the Bt toxin is decomposed and it's not left behind in the environment. And as we eat Bt crops, then it's already decomposed and in the gut it doesn't get through into our cell walls because it disappears. So everybody believed that, all our regulators believed that and it was approved. And now of course after 10-15 years of use of that Bt toxin in crops and in, on the land, we start to see negatives coming out. And both, like in, in the Midwest in the United States, a university measured Bt toxin in the streams, in the water, in the landscape. So Bt toxin is not broken down during the decomposition of the plants. And the other big study is in Canada, where they measured Bt toxin in the blood of women. And also then in pregnant women, that it goes to the fetus. And that's a very important uh, measurement to show that, like in natural systems, uh, there's not a single answer to a problem. You always have to do multi-generational studies, long-term studies, to keep finding the exception to the rule. Because biology is always changing. And now the issue with the Bt toxin is also very uh, difficult to accept. Because now the GM world says, ah, the, the, the concentration of, of the toxin in that blood is so small, you can't call it a toxin anymore. So who sets the limits of what's dangerous and what's not? So we're interested to see what the follow-up studies are with the, the children that are then in the mothers that were pregnant. And then the other issue was that the, the scientists were saying that those women were, hadn't been eating like Bt crops, all the food all the time. So it comes through the whole system in different ways. So if they, if they now design a, uh, an experiment to really start eating Bt corn in big amounts to people and then test the increase in Bt toxins in the blood, then you can start to get some activity, some action signs to show that it is the real bad one. Can you comment also, uh, this is really important for organic farmers, um, <coughs> When organic farmers use a BT spray, they spray it at once. Um, and it, the spray um, is the, the viability of the bacteria is broken down by exposure to sunlight and also is washed off the plant with rain. So my view, and I'd like you to see if you confirm this, is that there would be virtually nil bacteria with toxin on organic plants that would ultimately get onto the dinner plate because we wash those plants before food and the, the three days that the bacteria would survive is more than um, the time from most harvest through a wholesale system through to a retail shop through to someone's pantry and then be prepared to put on the table. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, the, BT, the BT spray in the cotton system is always the big question that people use as an argument that is, it can be wrong with organic food as well. That organic food can be contaminated and in the United States of course there are now big moves to make the regulation sharper and that uh, you can't produce food from small farms anymore because the big regulator comes in. But coming back to the BT issue, like with the once often spray and it's all regulated that you only spray once and then the post, the, the harvest delay, all those regulations in the use of Bt make sure that no, no Bt toxin will ever get to the food and the bacteria, all that side will be uh, non-existent because the plants standing in the open air and, and the ones of use, like if you would spray like four or five times in a season, then you get a continuum of negatives 
And whenever we have a continuum of negatives in the environment, it builds up to more harm. So the once off is completely safe. Right. Um, would you like to just say something in closing, which is um, in support of Steve Marsh, effectively, that, that you as an agronomist, um, that you throw your support behind Steve Marsh to have this common law right established in law in Australia, the right to grow GM3, the right to grow organic. Yeah, Steve Marsh, his case with the GM canola contamination on his property and it's him losing his organic certification is a, a case in point of where GM is going and what harm it can do.